Hey everyone, good to see you guys. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone here. So, we're back in Japan this Sunday. No city tour today, but we're back in the in the land of the rising sun, Japan. It's great to have everyone here today, and I hope you're all doing well. So yes, this is week three of our Japan adventure, and this might just be the one of the more important uh, episodes of this entire journey. So we're back here at uh, Utsuno, um, Utsumo Mia Aerodrome at Romeo Juliet Tango Uniform. So we're back here where we ended on last Wednesday, funnily enough. Actually, two weeks ago. So it's great to have all you guys here. So this one would be quite the important flight. Uh, we, we're going to visit a lot of landmarks today. So this would be quite the important uh, flight for today. So let's look at um, our flight. So this one would be quite the important flight today. So let's let's go over each of the legs of our flight for today. First, we'll be taking off here from Romeo Juliet Tango Uniform. And then from here, we're going to head straight to the city of Tokyo, Japan. Tokyo, the largest city in all of Japan, one of the world's most populous cities. And it is it is massive. It's got lots of landmarks around here. We're not going to visit the landmarks today. But 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 we're going to make up for it by I'm going to be teaching you the information information about Tokyo, its history, all the cultural stuff, landmarks, um, talk about all that sort of outer stuff, because we're going to be revisiting the city again in the future for the City Tour series, but this one will be a brief overview about the city of Tokyo. We're also going to be flying over the city of Kasa Kawasaki and Yokohama, two very important port areas. We might be able to see um, Haneda Airport, which is Japan's main domestic airport. And then we'll make our first stop here at Romeo Juliet Tango Oscar, located on Oshima Island. And then from there, we're gonna make we're gonna hit a straight beeline route into Mount Fuji, Japan's iconic mountain. You see it all sorts of postcards for Japan. But guys, did you also know that this is one of Japan's holy mountains? And plays a major role in Japanese culture. And then from there, we're gonna head an we're going to have a beeline over to the city of Nagoya, one of the most important, one of the more important cities of Japan as well. Major port area. And then we'll make our final landing here at Chubu Central Air International Airport, which is the main international airport for the city of Nagoya. So, or Nagua, I mean. So it's great to have all you guys here. I really, it's welcome to all those in the chat. If you're all lurking, hello to all you guys. So for today's flight, what plane are we going to take for today? Um, I think I have a pretty good option for the plane I'm taking for today. Something that will be fast, but not too fast for today's flight. And it is actually um, this beauty here. It's a Piper Arrow, but this is not the Turbo Arrow. I've decided to take the Normal Arrow for today. This is just the Normal, turbo, uh, norm, normal Arrow 3. But yeah, the Piper Arrow is is Piper's um, equivalent to the Cessna 172. This this beaut over over thirty thousand of these things have been built, and the Piper Piper Cherokee it's based on the Piper Cherokee. And this thing has been around since well the nineteen sixties. I mean, it's been it's been all over the place, many different models. It's been used all around the world by even military operators too, as a train plane. This thing can go quite fast. Um, it can reach 140 knots for the Arrow 3s. So, very versatile plane. And I haven't got much of a chance to fly the normal um, Arrow very much. I, you, most of my streets I fly the Turbo Arrow, but not really the normal Piper Arrow. So, I think it's going to be great to take this plane out for, uh, for a joyride. So, just like the Turbo Arrow, you have all this. I don't think we're going to need the GPS for, to, I don't think we need the modern GPS today. So we can, we're just going to keep the cockpit the same as, as it would normally. So this is what all of it looks like, the Guard G100. We're not really going to need the GPS. We're going to rely on our heading today. So we're going to keep everything like this. 
And then we will, um, we need to do some exterior checks for this thing. So let's go ahead into our checklist for today. Parking brakes already been set. Make sure it's lean. For fuel, let's see how much fuel we need. Um, I guess, I guess eighty-five percent would be enough. Now we need to remove our tie downs. Um, tie downs have been removed. Shocks have been removed. And everything else is closed, so we're good here. Now, if you guys want to join me, well, the route is, here's the route for today's trip. And I'm on East USA server, if you guys want to be more than interested to join me on this journey. The prop... Hey, Red Dragon, good to have you here. Red Dragon CMRU. Oh, oh, that'd be great. Turbo Arrow would be great for this one. Though it would be a little fast for the trip, but the Turbo Arrow is a good pick. And the fuel selectors on the fuel's tank already, so not a big deal. Now we're doing a cold engine um, start, so we're going to need to open the throttle half an inch. The battery switch should be... Um, let me go ahead and move this up here. Battery switch is on. Alternator is on. We got to turn on the beacon light. We got to turn on the navigation light, which is this, the anti-collision. Auxiliary boost pump um, on. All right, clear prop, clear prop, and we're going to start the uh, engine. Engine start, for those who don't know, is located here. Engine is on. Engine start is successful. The manuals would already be set back to both. Check the throttle, adjust around 1500 RPM. So to check, let's see our RPM meter. There it is. Okay, good. Oil pressure is looking good. And we can get ready to taxi. We just. You just got to set the transponder to set. Everything is set normally. And we can be, begin our check. So everything looks good, guys. So everything looks good. Now we can get ready to taxi. Now, by the way, guys, we are going to take off on runway 19 for today's uh, flight. So, we're going to take off here. <clears throat> so, we're going to go... Oh, there's Alec D. Yo, hello, Alec D. Good to have you here. I see you here. Thank, thanks, guys, for coming here today. I really appreciate it. So this one's going to be quite the important stream here today. 
in terms of content for today's stream, we have all sorts of things to talk about. Go ahead and get this thing taxied into the end of the runway. So we're going to go ahead and uh, I need to get this trimmed up and all that, so simply right here, get the trim up. So today we're going to be cruising around 1,500 feet. Um, this is according to our nav map here. So we're going to go ahead and... I'm going to wait till you guys get into the runway. I know you guys are going to join up. So if you guys want to feel more uncomfortable, I'm going to wait for a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and let's get this taken off then. Guys? name tags ahead of us, all these airliner tags, it's because, well, we're getting near to Tokyo. Um, most of them are either landing at Honda or Narita International, because those are the two main uh, major airports in Tokyo. By the way. Man, it's beautiful today in the land of the rising sun. Beautiful flying. Just beautiful, guys. I appreciate it. Just going to be going around in a circle. Just to see, every, just to wait for everyone else to get back up. So just gonna go for a circle around. So wait to ever see if everyone wants to get back up in the air. There's Red Dragon. We have Alec D behind us. Thank you guys so much for coming here today. I really appreciate all your, all you guys coming. As always. So, um, we're going to, I need to set my heading. So our heading for today is going to be, um, in 194 degrees. So I need to set the heading. HSI heading. 84 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and set the thing down a little bit. Actually, it's 194 degrees, not 184. 
I guess we can go 2,000 feet, I guess. Let's go 2,000. Actually, We turn on the heading switch. So heading would be on, switch would be on. So we're just gonna wait to 15 that hundred feet. And then I can always readjust the speed. There we go. So it's good to have you guys here. So today I'll be going over for today's topic. So today's topic is going to be talking about uh, Tokyo for a bit. The city of Tokyo is going to be the topic for our first leg of the trip. I mean, it's kind of important we talk about Tokyo considering it is Japan's capital. So we're going to go over the brief history of Tokyo now before we get to get going. So let's So we're going to go over uh, Tokyo, Japan. So this is forgot all you guys who don't what you don't know about Japan. I bet if you don't know this already, Tokyo is the capital the largest city of all Japan. And as one its metropolitan area is the most populous on the planet. Its entire metropolitan area is over 37 million people live in its metropolitan area. Which is the largest both in size and population as well. Located in Tokyo Bay, it forms a part of the Kanto region, which is its most populous region, and is the center of both the political and economic world, as well as the seat of the Emperor of Japan and its national government. It was originally a fishing village of known as Edo, it became a prominent political center in 1603 when it became the seat of the Tokugawa Shogunate. By the mid-18th century, it is now one of the most popular cities in the world. Following the end of the Shogunate, the, it, the imperial capital was moved to Tokyo and was renamed Tokyo, literally known as Eastern Capital. It was devastated by both the 1923 and earthquake and the Allied bombing raids, but beginning in the 1950s, Tokyo was rebuilt and it became a massive world, uh, city in the world stage. It's one of the, in fact, in terms of economic prowess, it's the largest in the world by any city. And it's categorized as an alpha plus city by the Globalization of World Cities Research Network. It's hosted many international events, including the 1964 Summer Olympics, the 2020 Summer Olympics, three different G7 summits, and much, much more. Tokyo is a legendary city, and it's very, very proud of a lot of its traditions. So the history, like I said, Tokyo goes all the way back to the uh, Edo period, which was when it was a village during this time. It was fortified by the Edo clan in the 12th century. In 1457, the Edo castle was built during this time. And the Tokyo Shogunate made its home here in, in Edo and it grew into a very prosperous city. And as a result, but thanks to the um, peaceful era without foreign involvement, the city is, became incredibly peaceful, and thus, and this allowed this village to continually rebuild itself with the fires, earthquakes, and others. However, this all came to an end when um, Commodore Matthew C. Perry uh, arrived and broke Japan's isolation, and eventually that caused um, a lot of rebellions and all that. Eventually this causes the um, Tokugawa Shogunate to be overthrown by the Emperor, 
1867, and that launched the Meiji Restoration. In 1869, Edo was renamed Tokyo and became the new uh, capital of Japan. And it turned Edo Palace into the, to onto the Imperial Palace of Japan. They also built the first subway line in 1927, the Metro Giza Line. However, there were two major catastrophes that hit Japan in the 20th century. First is the 1923 Kanto earthquake which was a 7.9 magnitude earthquake that struck within, within the island of Honshu, and it caused massive damage, as Tokyo was completely ruined by the earthquake. Now, in World War II, you see Japan was a major part of the Second World War. However, World War II brought a lot of destruction in Tokyo. Tokyo was bombed throughout the entire Second World War. The worst of those bombings, however, in fact, bombings between 1944 and 45 killed between 75,000 and 200,000 citizens, civilians, and left more than half the city destroyed. The deadliest night came in March 9th, 10th, in 1949, the night of Operation Mean House, with 700,000 incendiary bombs rained on the eastern half of the city and two-fifths of the city were completely burned, including losing 276,000 buildings, 100,000 civilians were killed, and 110,000 were injured. In fact, between 1940 and 1945, Tokyo lost 4 million people, from 6.7 million to 2.8 million. However, after the war was over, um, Japan, Tokyo was rebuilt Thanks to the administration of Douglas MacArthur. But Tokyo did not experience fast growth until the 1950s. After the occupation of to Japan ended in 1952, Tokyo was completely rebuilt and showcased to the world during the 1964 Olympics. The 70s and 80s brought whole new uh, high rise developments, including Sunshine 60, the tallest skyscraper in Asia during that time, and Tokyo Narita Airport. Which became one of the one of the big airports here in Asia. Tokyo, and as a result, Tokyo's subways are still really big as well. However, in the 90s, a major recession happened, which in Japan they call it the lost decade, but it's now slowly been recovering since. <coughs> There's also been a lot of uh, land reclamation projects happening during this time. However, one of the worst events happened in 2011 when the Tohoku earthquake and tsunami devastated uh, a lot of the Honshu area in the northeast, and it was still felt to Tokyo. In 2013, um, the International Olympic Committee uh, selected Tokyo to host the Olympic Games for 2020. Due to COVID, they had to postpone it a year to 2021. But and Tokyo so far has still been a major force in Asia. So that is a bit about the history of Tokyo. Like I said, I'll cover more um, for my cities tour series. So by the way, guys, uh, I want to check see how you guys are doing. So let's see who's flying with us. So we have Red Dragon flying with us today. And I think Alec D is somewhere around here. Oh, yeah, he's ahead of us. So Alec D and Red Dragon are here with us today. Thank you guys so much for coming along and flying with me today. I greatly appreciate it. I really deeply appreciate it. So, guys, I really do. If you guys haven't followed my channel yet, do not be afraid to smash that follow button. It would be really awesome. We're only nine away from four. We're only nine away from four hundred followers. 
which I think is amazing. We're this close to 400 people following the channel. And if you guys, if you guys like it as well, I do have a Discord here. You guys are more than free to join the Discord, the Snake Pit. Planet Neutral, good morning, Planet Neutral. I hope you're doing well. Uh, guys, definitely check out Planet Neutral's channel. Another good friend to the channel. I hope you're doing well, my friend. We're currently heading away into the city of Tokyo today. Tokyo, one of the world's great cities as well. So, we're doing that for today. So yeah, there's a lot about Tokyo that I think is just really interesting as well. Now I'm hoping to do a city, city tour series in Tokyo at some point in the future. Because I know I want to, I definitely want to visit Tokyo. It has photogrammetry. Very nice. Oh, you're on vacation. That's awesome. Where are you heading to? Go ahead, neutral. I hope you're. I hope you have an amazing vacation. I had a great cruise earlier uh, last week, so I hope I hope you have a great time as well. Oh, you're hitting the Hilton Head. Oh, that's all. That's that's great. Hilton Head's a very interesting area here in South Carolina. Have a great time, then, my friend. So um, we're gonna go ahead and talk about some of the rest of it as we head to Tokyo. So let's discuss the rest of Tokyo, shall we? First, Tokyo seascape. Um, the seascape of Tokyo is shaped by its history. You see, the region was destroyed twice in its recent history: 1923 and World War II. Due to this, Tokyo's urban landscape is mostly modern and contemporary architecture, with the older buildings being really scarce. 
Tokyo features many uh, famous modern architectural things, including the Tokyo International Forum, the Ashashi Beer Hall, and Rainbow Bridge. There's also two very famous towers, the Tokyo Tower, and finally, the second tallest structure in the world, the Tokyo Sky Tree, can be found here in Tokyo. And finally, there's also, in addition to this as well, coming next year, Japan's going to have an even taller building, which is going to be finished in March 2023. In addition to all this, Tokyo has also got lots of gardens and parks including four of them in the prefecture, including Fuji National Park, which is not Fuji. In terms, the next thing we gotta talk about Tokyo is its economy, because you wouldn't believe this, but Tokyo has the largest metropolitan economy in the world by GDP. According to a study, the to in 2012, with its purchasing power parity, its total GDP was $2 trillion. $2 trillion! To put this in context, that's more than many nations have in their GDP. Compared it to, um, uh, to put this perspective, national GDP by country. With two trillion dollars, that's that that puts it that that would make it ninth in the world in GDP, above countries like Italy. Canada, Russia, South Korea, and Australia. Yes, all of those, the city of Tokyo makes more GDP than those countries. I mean, that's just going to put into context how insane Tokyo's economy, economic power is. It's, I mean, there's many reasons for that. Tokyo obviously has the largest population of any metropolitan area. Also, in addition to this, it's a massive finance center with with some of the world's largest investment banks making their home here in Japan. And of course, it's also the most expensive uh, city in the world for 14 years until, until 2006 when it was replaced by Oslo and Paris. It's also a financial center in the 19th, has been that way since 1960. And of course, another contributor is tourism. You see, Tokyo is incredibly popular with tourists. As around 4.81 million foreigners visited in, in 2006, but lots of Japanese tourists have made their visit here to Tokyo. I mean, a, a lot of it has to do with the fact that Tokyo is very well known for its pop culture. And there's a lot of districts that reflect Tokyo's popular pop culture. There's also other attractions, including the Studio Ghibli Anime Center, as well as the Tokyo National Museum. And of course, Tokyo is also a massive seafood market. It's home to the largest seafood market in the world, the Toyotsu Market. And basically, this, this fish market has over 50,000 buyers and sellers each day with all sorts of things they sell. Anything from tuna all the way to even more exotic fish. Which kind of makes sense. Tokyo, Japan is a massive seafood-loving place. They love their seafood. Um, for transportation reasons, um, now here's an interesting fact about Tokyo's airspace. For, for guys who don't know, to Japan does not own the airspace over Tokyo, contrary to many believe. Actually, the U.S. owns that, is actually under the control of the U.S. by the military since World War II. As a result, public to transportation in Tokyo is dominated by an extensive network of clean and efficient trains and subways. There's up to 62 electric train lines and 900 train stations in the entire city. It's also home to the busiest pedestrian crossing, uh, Shibuya Crossing, with over 3,000 people crossing at a single time. And, and because the U.S. controls Tokyo's airspace, Japan constructed air, all those international airports outside of Tokyo. The two most important ones are Narita International and Chiba Prefecture, 
and the other one is in Hanada Airport, which was built on the reclaimed land at Ota. There's also various islands that have their own airports, including the one representing Oshima Airport. There's also Hashiojima Airport. But the main primary mode of transportation is rail, as it has featured some of the most extensive railway network in the world. So yeah, lots of different transportation stuff in Tokyo. Be great to mention. So, oh, we're actually entering Tokyo right now, guys. Just slow down this for bits. Let's finish this up. For culture, we actually are going to... Um, it's got rich in culture with theater and the arts. Japan's rich in all sorts of theater, opera, ballet, and dance. It also hosts a lot of Japanese international pop and rock musics as well. And of course, the many different festivals, including the Sano, Sanja, and Kanada festivals. And of course, the Cherry Blossom festivals are famous here in Japan, too. Oh yeah, don't forget Japanese cuisine. In fact, Tokyo has more Michelin three-star restaurants than any other city on the planet. Yes, even more than Paris. Sports are rich, too. I mean, the Olympic Games is big. And you wouldn't be surprised, but baseball is a massive deal here in Tokyo as well. And of course, it's hosted two Olympic Games in 1964 and 2020, which technically should be 2021, but COVID had a way in it. And finally, pop culture. Tokyo is a big city pop culture, particularly in Japanese movies, anime, web comics, video games, and more. Especially most famously featured in the kaiju film things. Also, Hollywood movies have made their ways for backdrops, including Tokyo Joe, James Bond's You Live Only Twice, Fast and the Furious, Wolverine, and Avengers Endgame all make their appearances here in Tokyo. So, guys, welcome to the city of Tokyo. So, welcome to Tokyo, guys. Look at that, guys. We made our way into Tokyo, guys. This is awesome. Now, of course, I'm going to be doing a city tour flight over the city later on on my streams. So I'll go into more landmarks in detail. But we're going to fly over Japan. Look how awesome this city is. This is huge, by the way. By the way, uh, we just entered the metropolitan area of Japan way back there. I mean, just look how much this extends to. This is all J the Japanese metropolitan area. It's, it's 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 insane. Just to put that in context, it's nuts. So yeah, I hope you guys actually enjoyed um, the slideshows and stuff. Hey friends, all good to have you here. So yes, I'm in the Piper PA28 uh, era. So yeah, there's quite a few famous landmarks. Uh, if you guys don't mind, I got plenty of time for today. I'm going to fly over a little bit about the city today. So let's see if I can see any of the iconic Japanese landmarks. Okay, first one. Uh, this one should be not hard to uh, miss. Be, it'd be hard to miss. See this tall tower over there? This is Japan's largest tower. Um, this is the Tokyo Sky Tree. Um, this was actually um, constructed in 2008, and it was completed in four years later in 2012 at a cost of 65 billion uh, Japanese yen. Its top uh, height, with including the antenna, is 2,080 feet. It's got 32 floors above ground and three below ground with 13 listed elevators. It was actually built to have earthquake resistance thanks to its structure because, you know, Japan's has had earthquakes in the past. And it's currently used as a radio, uh, TV broadcast and communications tower. And of course, you can also visit the tower's observation deck and you have a, an incredible view over Tokyo. You also might even see Mount Fuji too, from its observation deck. So, oh, you must see sumo wrestling. Yes, sumo wrestling is a massive view in Japan. It's, it's a historic national sport for the city. Absolutely.
So yeah, let's let's go fly over the um, sky tree, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and disable the autopilot. So we're gonna fly over a bit about Tokyo. Definitely want to go check out the city. City now. Now, for of all, I probably do the Tokyo City tour at some point. Uh, in one of my later streams. But I just want to do a quick over flyover of the city. But yeah, I mean, that just tells you the landscape of the city. Oh yeah, and for all, I think I mentioned this earlier too. We're technically fly over U.S. military airspace, technically. Because the jet, because it's actually been that way since World War, after the Second World War ended. But you can see how built up this city is. It's just, it's huge. But there's all sorts of stuff in Tokyo. Um, not just the sky tree, but you also have a lot of shrines. You have... Just incredible. Look at this. Now, yes, Tokyo got, was actually the part of the first update. This actually now is photogrammetry, which is free. So, yeah, this is the Tokyo Sky Tree, guys. Big tower. It's massive. It's actually the world's second tallest structure. So. I mean, if you thought New York was big, like, Tokyo, it's nothing compared to Tokyo's metropolitan area. It's even, even bigger. That's that's unbelievable. G Rise Brits, good to have you here. First time chat. Yes, this is the PC version on um, J Rise um, Brits. Now they made one for Xbox, but this is on PC, obviously. But it's great to have a first time chatter. I hope you're doing great. Ah, oh, yeah, no problem. I'm I'm more than happy to help. So we're doing a Japan adventure tour. Oh, you just got the game for your Xbox. Awesome. Yeah, never wrong with the Xbox version. I know they had some issues with it. But I'm glad it's on the Xbox, because I think it has its own issues to sort out, but it's actually still quite good. Now, down, to, um, down below us should be the Imperial Palace. Here's the Imperial Palace down below us. Um, there's the Imperial, uh, there's the Imperial Province, and... And what I found here is the parliamentary building. All this sort of stuff below us. But beautiful area. Just, it's massive.
Oh, you're flying for GFK to Dubai in a Cessna? Um, that would take you forever in a Cessna 172. Now, the Citation, it would still take you many, many hours in a Citation. But good luck on the journey, man. And then, guys, to our left... Um, to our left here is uh, Tokyo Tower. This was originally the tallest building in Tokyo during when it was built during the 1950s. But this Tokyo Tower is over, um, it's 1,000 feet tall, around 1,090 feet tall. It was completed in 1958, and it was the tallest building in Tokyo up until the 1980s, one of the tower buildings. But it's become one of the most prominent landmarks in the city featured all sorts in media in Tokyo. Most famously featured in a lot of the Godzilla films, as it's been the location of many numerous battles with Godzilla, Mothra, Gamera, and King Kong. Along with other films like Digimon, Sailor Moon, and the anime Death Note. All those have been very famous animes as well. Oh, I'm passing through Alaska. Oh, you're passing through Alaska. I guess that makes a lot of sense then. See where Captain Rash is, throwing, is, is going to fly around the world in the 172. Yeah, Captain Rash, very, very awesome um, guy as well. Yeah, it's insane flying through Tokyo. Absolutely incredible. There's a lot of the Tokyo Bridge. Uh, behind us was the Rainbow Bridge, one of the bridges in Tokyo. But yeah, I'm going to have to do a city tour of this at some point. Does, does not. Now, guys, ahead of us, um, right here, see this area here? Well, this is Hanada Airport. Um, this is one of Japan's most important airports. This is one of the two... Uh, this is one of the two major international airports for Tokyo, the other one being Narita. This was built on um, reclaimed land during this time. It was actually used to be the primary international airports in Tokyo until 1978. In fact, this place was this airport was actually opened in the 1930s, believe it or not. But it serves all sorts of different aircraft facilities, and they fly all around the world. I mean, there's some pretty insane flights um, from Hanada Airport, by the way. Um, they, they did flights all the way in New York. They done flights from LA, obviously in the West Coast. But they also did flights from New York, Washington, D.C., Atlanta, Detroit, Toronto. And they did flights even from Australia, like Brisbane and Sydney and Melbourne to flights in Europe, like London, Paris, and Frankfurt. Like, they do some pretty long-range flights from Hanada Airport. And it's also, it's also a handcrafted airport, if you ever, I think it's from the Deluxe Edition, I believe. Or was it from the Japan World Update? But Hanada is now a handcrafted airport you can get from Microsoft Flight Simulator from a Sobo. So, something to keep in mind here as well. So, we're flying over Hanada Airport. I mean, it is a very impressive airport. Tons of um, runways and all that. The very, very impressive airport. And mind you, this air, this airport was built on reclaimed land. And I think that's going to be a re recurrent theme for a lot of airports in Japan, especially for the urban areas. They had to reclaim the land because, like I said, Japan, you don't have much space with all the mountainous areas of the country.
It says, it says that according to Flight Connections, the longest flight is actually from... Um, it's actually from Atlanta to Tokyo. Is the longest flight they do from Canada Airport. It's actually Atlanta. That's pretty crazy to think about. So, uh, after we make our way through Tokyo, um, the next city we're going to pay a visit to is the city of Yokohama. Oh, whoops. Uh, oh, oh no. Uh, I accidentally uh, exited out of the PowerPoint slide. Um, let me get let me get back to it. I'm I'm really sorry. Sorry, I had to. I accidentally exited out of it. Um, ah, here it is, Yokohama, Japan. Um, Yokohama is where we're revisiting next. It is actually, in terms of population, um, you wouldn't believe this, but Yokohama is actually the lo second largest city in Japan. It's actually in Yokohama, right? It's the most populous municipality in Japan with 3.8 million people. It's also the major economic commercial hub of the greater Tokyo area. It was actually the city that first opened trade with the West um, back in the 1850s. And it became known as a major port city after the city of Kobe. It's, it was home to many firsts during the Meiji period of Japan, including the first foreign trade port, Chinatown, European sports venues, English letter newspaper, beer and beer manufacturing, along with a uh, daily newspaper, railway station, and power plants. It was it was developed really rapidly as a prominent port city followed Japan's isolation, and has been the largest port city and high tech hub of the Greater Tokyo area. And it's and the city proper is home to headquarters such as Isuzu, Nissan, JVC Kenwood. Koei Tecmo, video game company, in the Bank of Yokohama. Famous landmarks include the Minato Mira 21, the Palm Mira Memorial Park, Yokohama Marine Tower, and Osabashi Pier are very famous landmarks here at Yokohama. And just like Tokyo, this city has full grammar tree now, so that is Yokohama, Japan. But yeah, this is a very cool area as well. So welcome to Yokohama, Japan. Stunning, man. This is beautiful. Not so far from Atlanta. 6,865 miles, 13 hour flight. Yep. That's Hanada's busiest uh, route. So, this is downtown uh, Yokohama. This per peculiar landmark right here, according to my uh, map, I believe. That, oh, who's that? Oh, Uncle Uncle B Sim Channel has just followed the channel. Welcome, Uncle B Sim Channel. Good to have you here. We're doing a flight over Japan for the FS Hub Achievement Japanese Adventure. So this is downtown Yokohama. Beautiful Japan. Stunning area to fly over in Microsoft Flight Simulator. This was actually the city. This was actually the country that had the world's first update for Microsoft Flight Sim back in 2020. So there is Yokohama. We just flew over that. We're going to head back to the... Um, wait, what? Gonna turn... Autopilot on. 
Okay, switch on, altitude hold, enable. So we're gonna head back on course. Um, we're gonna head back on course. Hey, I think I've seen you on Captain Arash's Alley streams. Oh yes, I am. A, I I was on her streams. Yes, I'm a big part of Allison's streams. And Captain Arash's. Yes, I'm 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 actually a researcher and I've helped Allison and Arash with some research and stuff. It's great to have you here. I'm doing great. So. Um, for all the all those guys who've been on my streams, I am a researcher. I do um, presentations and slideshows in order to teach all the places we're flying. And that way, when you come learn from my streams, you'll be learning something on my streams. You see, Microsoft Flight Simulator, in my eyes, is more than just picking up a plane and fly. It's all about the experiences and the journeys that we've learned um, for each and every single stream. I think it's important. And we got a fall from Goof Your Manatee. Well, welcome. Fantastic to have all you guys here. Thank you so much. So, um, we're doing this because of Firefly Air, which is the main, it's actually a virtual airline on FS Hub. Illuminator 1974 has just fallen. Guys, thank you so much for the follows. This is this has been amazing. This has been awesome, guys. Oh, can you make in any breakdown? Uh, says Vodka Kazima Yark. Um, I can make breakdowns of all sorts of historical stuff. I don't think I could do it here in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Unfortunately. So um, the part, the organization part of is Firefly Air for the two tone Murphy community. I am his resident researcher after all. So Firefly Air is a virtual airline on FS Hub. You can join for free, and it works with um, with a really cool client called Land Rate Monitor. In order to join, click the pilot application, set up your profile on FS Hub. Then you can see Firefly Air here. And you probably have a little membership, just apply for membership. Then download the landing rate monitor thing, which is what I've used to track all my landings. But it's more than just landing thing you track. It it keeps track of all your flights, you can do loop planning, and more. Which is it, it's an amazing logbook. And then you just run FSGIPC or Xplane UIPC because you can run Xplane here too. And and you're pretty much set for Firefly Air. What about land without gear? Um, um, I can't land without gear, but I'm not a foolish pilot, though, Vodka. But, um, I don't want to do that, though. I want to have a good landing and stuff. But that being said, I did try it once without landing gear. Um, it didn't go well. I mean, go ask two cats, um, who, who by the way, is a two-tone Murphy affiliate and a good friend of mine in the community. He accidentally uh, landed without his landing gear up, which was pretty funny. I think it was during one of the Microsoft streams. He accidentally landed on that. Still remember it. Very, very funny. We're going to go ahead and pick up some speed now. As we're approaching our first stop, we're actually going to cross this Agami Bay into the island of Oshima. So, we're going to be doing that. But man, this Japan is such a beautiful country to fly over. Love the mountains. And I absolutely adore the scenery here. And I can't wait for Lake 2. Lake 2 is going to be incredible. Flying over Mount Fuji is going to be incredible.
but I'm not going to make any lanes with left, without the lane gear. Like that. But thank you, though. So I want to ask you guys, I hope you guys have had an amazing weekend so far. I hope you guys have had a great weekend so far. I hope you guys had a lot of fun this weekend. Um, for me, my weekend was uh, quite nice. Um, I just had to battle my coat. I had a cold I'm still fighting through. But it's not stopping me from streaming. So, um, for all you guys who are new in the chat, No worries, Red Dragon. Um, no worries, man. S sorry, guys. Um, there was there was a re there was a disconnect issue. I was just slightly disconnected. So, so we're actually going to go fly over to our first destination. We're gonna, it's going to be on the island of Izu Ashima. Which is going to be our um, destination. So, what is Izu Oshima? Well, you see, Izu Oshima is actually one of the islands outside of Tokyo. Um, it's actually part of the Izu Archipelago, which uh, in the Philippine Sea, located off the coast of Honshu, as with islands. As with the other islands in the Izu Island Troop, it forms the part of the Fuji Hakone Izuzu National Park. It's actually the largest and closest of the outlying islands. Believe it or not, this island is actually a stratovolcano, believe it or not. Dating back to the late Pleistocene period between 10,000 to 15,000 years ago, it arises from, uh, from an ocean floor with a depth of around 300 or 400 meters. It's about 32 miles in length. Its highest elevation is Mount Mira, which we see right ahead of us. It's around 2,400 feet. <laughs> now, major eruptions have actually occurred on the island in 1965 and 1986, and the last reported eruption was 1990. And believe it or not, this island was also where the epicenter of the 1923 Kanto earthquake occurred. It was deep beneath the island. But this area is actually very popular for tourists, and there's been a lot of ferries that operate between Tokyo and the island due to its proximity. And there's also several flights each day at Oshima Airport. And in terms of pop culture, this was featured prominently in the movie, in the Japanese movie The Return of Godzilla in 1984, in which the JSDF trapped Godzilla after luring to the craters. And then it reappeared again in the in the sequel movie in 1989, Godzilla vs. Biollante, when Godzilla was a, was released when the volcano erupted during this time. In addition to Godzilla, it was featured in the Pokemon franchise when Cinnabar Island was based off of it. In the anime, Vivid Red Operation, very, where it's home to several protagonists from the, from the anime. So, yeah, this island's actually been very. You did? I'm not. Uh, let me go check. Hmm. 
No, I don't think it was muted. I think I was disconnected. Um. <coughs> you guys hear me now, I guess. Um, I think I had a disconnect earlier in the stream. Unfortunately. I don't think I'm mute. Um, can you guys hear my voice now? Um, just wanted to make double sure my voice is working well. No problem. MP. Negative. Oh. I think I know what was wrong. Weird. Um, Sorry about that. I had to readjust. Let me go ahead and readjust this. Sorry about that. I had to make a readjustment. So, I hope you guys hear me now. Yes. Weird. Um, very, very weird. That's kind of odd. Um, yeah, I had a disconnect issue. That's weird. Well, uh, I guess that's the case. So that's where our island's from. Um, so there's the island of Oshima. Yeah, I had a disconnect issue, so that was... So, um, I hope you guys can actually hear me a bit better. Or am I still muted? Well, I guess can you guys still hear me? There, I had to actually um, activate a few changes and all that. Weird, no sound for me. That's still weird. That's, that's really weird. No cell. Oh, I think I know what it is. Can you guys hear me now?
No stone cell, that's weird. The sound of silence, understand the challenges of deaf people. Yeah. Can you guys hear me now, I guess? Really? If I have to, I might have to start... Can you guys hear me now, I guess? So, um, are we, we're going to actually land here at this airport. Um, let me go ahead and land here at, um, this is Romeo, Juliet, Oscar, Oscar. Yes, we're going to land at, um, uh, Romeo, Juliet, Oscar, um, Tango, Tango Alpha, this is Oshima Airport. This is where we're going to land here today. So this is Oshima Airport. Um, it was located in the island of Honshu, Japan. Um, it was built in 1964 with the 3,000-foot runway. It was lengthened to the present uh, in October 2002 to 5,900 feet it, to permit operation with jet plane based planes. In 2009, they operated from Shofu Airport during this time. So obviously there's that too. This is where we're going to land. So we're going to go ahead and get the lane gear down. So we're going to go ahead and land this down. So we're going to go ahead and land this down um, on runway 21.
Runway 21, we're going to make a landing here. We're going to make a landing here. Perfect landing. Perfect landing. That's weird. You guys still can't hear me. That's weird. Maybe it's something with Twitch. So we're parked here uh, for now. So, so here's Alec D landing into all uh, the runway. Here's Alec D. Here comes Alec D in the runway. There's Oshima. Nicely done. And there's Red Dragon with the landing. Nicely done, YouTube. Good job, YouTube. Nicely done. So nicely done, guys. Um, no, that's weird. You still guys can't hear my voice? Um, that's weird. I'm going to go. I'm probably going to do this. I'll be right back. I'm going to restart the stream.
Hey guys, can you hear me now? I guess I probably need to adjust some of the advanced audio properties. Well, I guess that's certainly the case. So I hope that's the case as well. I guess, I guess, do, do you think I should restart the stream, guys? Or... Let's see if this guy's works pretty well. So hopefully, I think it'd be good, though, if I get an opportunity to redo the stream again. So, I guess we should get ready for the second leg of the trip, if you guys don't mind. So I guess if you guys don't mind, um... I guess we should get the stream thing started as well. Hopefully, if we get this completed, um, we should be in good hands. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna re. I'm gonna restart the stream and all that. <laughs> 